that's to actually learn how to be responsible. Great transition too, because honestly, Seriously. schools are like, like I, I, you know, I went to public, ed- you know, I had public ed- education, and you know, it didn't fail me. I learned a lot. I came out and I had a thirst for knowledge, and like I, I genuinely enjoyed it. And I came out, I think, pretty well rounded. I don't think that's solely because of my education, but um, it's just there are so many things that are missing from what we would consider education. Like we put such an emphasis on, you know, the mitochondria is the, the powerhouse of a cell. Like, why the fuck do I need to know that when I don't know how to do my own taxes? You know, like, and if I come out of school and if, if the purpose of an education is to mold young people to be productive people in society afterwards, then you need to give them the right tools and, and skills necessary to thrive. And if you're coming out of you know high school and you're just all they're doing is is funneling kids into college, and it's because they're not doing their jobs right. You know you, that they're just like, oh, learn life skills in college, and then kids go to college and they don't know anything about the world. And they life just, skills, a keg party. You yeah, know? <laughs> and it's then you come out and you've just been fed one point of view, and it's you know we'll we'll come back to the, that, but. You know, they, they need to teach people how to sew, and they used to do that back in the day. You know, Don't like, point at me when you say that, <laughs> fucker. Excuse the language. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day, though, there was like, at Edgewater High School when I went there, I went to public education. Shop for mechanics. Maybe last year and a half. There was a ceramic shop. I took ceramics class. Oh, we had ceramics, too. Yeah, but I mean, it was like they had the kiln and everything. Now it's like, ah, fire on the school. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we have a kiln there, too. They still have that, but. You know, there, there was so many an auto practical mechanic. skills. That there was an know. auto mechanic shop there. Exactly. People used to bring their cars there to get their brakes done, the yeah. coaches and stuff. I was like, this is unreal. It's like they got a, it's like they got a gig going on back <laughs> there, you know? Teaching people how to become auto mechanics. Shop where they made stuff with saws and yeah. blades on them and everything like that. And, and those, those are real life skills. Like No accidents. Like when I, I saw when I look for different jobs and stuff, though, there are fine paying jobs. I was looking the other day. Um, there was a company near... Um, the university they're building some shit and they're paying carpenters like $28 an hour you could come out of high school if you took four years of shop or four years of like woodworking or something like that you would know how to do 90% of that framing and shit like that you would know how to do it so you would be 18 years old making $28 an hour imagine if you went to air conditioning school Exactly. And you live in like, Florida, oh man. God, so do yeah. I. It's like so, so hot much here. Money. As soon as it gets hot, your air conditioner gets fucked up. It doesn't work anymore. So when your air conditioner dies, you expect it to be fixed. Exactly. Yesterday. Yeah. Like. And they get out <laughs> the, actually, the guy that I called, he came out at 7 30, 8 o'clock at night, and he still had three or four calls after me. Mm. And he had been to like 13 or 14 before Jesus. me. Jesus. That's thinking, money. He charges like 180 to $200. Just to come out and do the rinky dink thing he did, and it wasn't much. It was like changing a capacitor and something else. It was real simple, and it was outside. He never even had to come inside the house, and they were done in twenty minutes. Mm. And they were and they charged them one hundred eighty some dollars because yeah. they asked the landlord. And I'm like, man, they're going and doing that many stuff. Those guys are multi millionaires by now because this guy wasn't. Some spring chicken. Yeah. He was way older than me. I'm thinking. Man, <laughs> and he says, man, he goes, I work my ass off because I've been at it since like six o'clock in the morning. And this was around eight o'clock at night. And see, I think that is a, as a major, um, de- that, you know, it's disincentivizing kids to go that direction because people talk about it's hard work and, you know, we tell kids, you know, go to college. My dad used to tell me the same thing. He would look, you know, when I was way younger, obviously, but who's showing his hands and be like, this is why you go to college. And, you know, we teach our kids, like, you want to go get a job where you use your brain and it's not hard work and you make good money and stuff, but everyone's going that route and now no one's taking the somewhat hard job and those jobs are paying a tremendous amount of money. Auto mechanics make a shit ton, air conditioning, woodworking, there's all this stuff. And even if they didn't learn it necessarily in high school, you know, there's a lot of skills that need to be taught there, like taxes and shit. But we've not we've gotten to the point where we've almost made like stigmatized um, like trade schools and trade skills. You know, like you look at a plumber and you think they're like a blue collar worker, so they must be lesser than the the guy who's wearing a suit every day. But guess what? The guy wearing a suit every day is making fifteen dollars an hour, and the plumber just brought home a grand after you know One two day. three days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some of these people make thousands and thousands of dollars a day, and if you don't, then you're not then you're not doing it right. And and that's where the demand's at right now. Is it everywhere has been I learn. 
it has been there, but now since there's a lot more people thinking, well, I'm going to go be a philosopher or you know whatever the hell they think they're going to do with their worthless degree that doesn't make them a job more than fifteen dollars an much. hour, that they spend a hundred thousand dollars on this degree that's going to take them forever and ever to pay back. Yeah, they could have gone to a trade school that was cheapo depot and become a forklift operator, crane operator. I mean, those guys make awesome money. Yeah. You know, depending on, especially in some of these bigger construction fields. I know it's hard work, but hell, you know, with the air conditioner guy, my dad was an air conditioning person and he didn't make a whole lot of money doing it because he never went on his own and did it. He worked for Sears and he stayed there for There you go. Yeah, you get comfortable. Yeah, you get comfortable. You get complacent. You get yeah. lazy. And I'm telling you, that's what kills people. That's, yeah, I, that's actually one of my biggest fears is like... If you quit working, you start dying. And it's complacency that's what well, does it. Well, it's not just that, but like, I feel like people end up getting comfortable because they build a standard of living and they can't revert backwards. So then they get stuck in places where they don't want to be. Yeah. And then they sacrifice their dreams and ambitions because of the practical needs. And that makes sense. You know, sometimes you have a kid or you have student loan money and you have to be paying these things so it creates a pressure on you but then you become bogged down and you never actually get to spread your wings as an individual and do what you wanted because now you're focusing on paying this or that bill rather than focusing on developing yourself and that's why we're doing this yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> that's why we're doing this <laughs> yeah. i'm glad you just explained the essence of both of our ideas because yeah. i think that this is a really good a, a good thing that people find out the truth the truth is everything and we're only being told part of it in all the media. And I think that when the truth starts actually coming out, because you can only hide things for so long, I think it might be a fundamental shift in our country. And if we start talking about it now, you know, we could be on the top leading edge of this stuff. I mean, because it's going to happen. There's going to be a swing in the pendulum. And I believe... Well, you're starting to believe in the future, politics now, huh? Yeah. yeah but I mean, I in the that. future, it's going to be different. <laughs> things are going to be different. People aren't going to be sent, you know, trying to go get these... You know, what I consider to be non existent jobs in the future, they're going to actually change the, the school system to where they go back to the way of teaching people actually how to make it in society. Because a lot of people are going to be in for a big, big letdown. A lot of people. Yeah, unfortunately. And, and the, the fucked up is, part is it's like they're not being let down at 18 when they, you know, get out of high school and then they become like, you know, a burnout or something. They're educated people with a shit ton of debt, yeah. and they need a fucking job, and they don't have a job, and there's no job op opportunities out there. And unfortunately, when I sit back and I consider what kind of trade skills I could have earned in the same amount of time that I've been in, in, at university, you know, I could have gone to two different trade schools for two years, you know, and gotten two different degree, two different career paths. I could have blended them. I could have done like you know, woodwork and plumbing, and then just be a badass on the construction site and make probably, you know, $40 an hour. Or video production would be nice so you don't have to yeah. sleep sleepless nights on the internet <laughs> learning how to do all this stuff. God. <laughs>